So the next study we want to share with you guys today is our small plot soybean by fungicide and population study. This is a small plot trial that we placed across Illinois. How many locations do we have total? Um, it, it's quite a few. It's, we've placed it at about six or seven locations okay. over the last three years. The locations aren't always the same. One right. year we have one. Pretty know, widely left. distributed though. Right, yeah, across. from down by Decatur all the way up to yep. towards Chicago. Cool. This is a small plot trial, like I said, so definitely a shout out to our ARNs, our ag research managers who conduct these trials out in the field with their small plot equipment. Yeah, yeah, that allows us, doing those small plot trials have some benefits, so we, a lot of the trials we conduct are strip trials, and those have a certain, you know, those allow us to see how things perform more in a farmer-like setting, but this allows us to replicate and randomize and do some things that give real good data. Absolutely, so four replications per, lo per site, right? Right. Okay. Yep. Great. So let's jump right into the data from 2021 and the previous few years. So Preston, I think that the most important thing when we, when we start talking about trials is, you know, it, it's great to see what yields the best, it's great to see what controls disease, but the bottom line is, does it pay for a farmer? Mm -hmm. And so I always like to look at ROI, and I know you do too. Absolutely, yeah. And so here we're looking at different populations um, with and without fungicide. And so populations ranging from 60,000 to 160,000 um, over the past, uh, three years here we're looking at and so one thing that really stands out here that we can see immediately is um, you know I, I'm no mathematician but this line's higher than this line I think the blue line is definitely higher yeah. than the orange line yep so that's the fungicide line and really consistently across populations and and really it's interesting it the curves kind of follow each other here even though we have you know kind of an unexplained little dip here um, at 140,000, but we really see consistently about a $40 benefit to the fungicide application. That's even figuring in um, the, the cost of the application being around $30. So regardless of population planted, fungicide always paid it seems, for the last couple of years. Exactly, that's what this data bears out. Interesting. Yep. And so uh, one thing we see here also is that if, if we're looking at a fungicide application, you can see here on this blue bar, our maximum ROI is at uh, 120,000 population. So, you know, we still see population in, or yield increases as we go with a higher population, but not enough to, to give us additional benefit when we factor in the cost of the seed. Right. Now, when we look at a lower or lower input type system where we don't apply a fungicide um, and look at different populations, uh, we have to get to 160,000 here to get our maximum ROI <laughs> if we're not but we're still leaving $40 on the table by not putting the fungicide on. Interesting. Most of these trials had a normal planting date for the area. They were a little bit on the late side, unfortunately. Okay. So we talked about the small plot research, yep. and that's one of the limitations of the small plot research is right. getting things in the ground in a timely manner. They have to be packaged into a certain way so that they can use our cassette planters yep. to plant them. And they have a lot of other uh, things that are very important. You talked earlier about national protocols and, and, and those kind of take precedence over some of this regional work that we do. Yep. yep. So Jason, at these locations, did you have a chance to actually get out in the field and look at the level of disease pressure that you had yeah, in these did. trials? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I have a graph. <laughs> All right. I may have helped rate at least one of these locations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> So yeah, that's one thing last couple of years, we, we started looking at just the population, we're looking at the yield, but really what we want to understand is how does that affect disease, a different population? You know, yeah. it, kind of the common uh, understanding or you know, agronomic advice might be that at a lower population, you should have a little bit less disease development. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, when we looked at disease development across these populations, here we have the blue is no fungicide and the orange is fungicide, and we rate these on a one to nine scale. So a one would mean I couldn't find a single drop of disease out there, and a nine would be, you know, it's, it's a disaster. The thing is so yep. lit up with disease that, you know, it's gonna lose a bunch of yield. And so that's a one to nine scale, you know, as you know, uh, and you can see here, we're looking at fairly low uh, levels of disease development. Mm -hmm. and part of that's because, as you mentioned, plant and later. And so we see a, a pretty significant increase though in disease ratings, better disease rating, when we apply the fungicide, which we'd expect. So, if, you know, fungicide has plant health benefits, but it also controls That's disease. That's what I was gonna ask. So, you, on your previous ROI slide, there was such a 
dichotomy between the sprayed versus the unsprayed? Is there other synergistic effects that the fungicide's providing, or do you have any speculation as to any value the fungicide brings beyond disease control? Yeah, I think, I think you know, we have some data here showing that we see benefits to fungicide even in fairly low disease right. pressure fields. And, right. and we know that um, certain components of fungicides can inhibit ethylene production, which is a, mm -hmm. it's a, plant, it's a hormone that a plant produces in response to stress. Right. You know, everybody knows what, what, a, what happens to a banana if you put it in a paper bag, you know, it gets yeah. brown faster. Yeah. Yeah. That's because of ethylene. And so, you know, plant, all, all plants give that off in stress situations and fungicides can reduce that and, right. and they can stay healthy longer. Another interaction we might yeah. want to look at is row spacing in population. So, yeah. you know, the question is, should I plant at a, a narrower row spacing? In a lot of situations, that does make sense. And, and we can see here, um, it's worth a couple of bushels in yield if you, if you have the ability to plant in 20 inch rows mm -hmm. over 30s. Um, and that's pretty consistent. We've seen that, you know, this is data from 2021, but that's, we've seen that pretty consistently over the last few years. So you see, you know, a, a little bit of a ROI benefit from planting in narrower rows. Now, when we talk about narrow rows, um, one thing we could be concerned about is if you're going to go into narrower rows, would you see more lodging or would you see more lodging in 30 inch rows where the plants are closer right. together? So we know as we crowd plants that grow a little bit taller, they're a little mm -hmm. more likely to fall over. Yep. Um, but what we saw here is yes, at a higher population, yes, we see more lodging. Again, fairly low. Um, this is also a one to nine scale where one was very little lodging and, and nine would be flat on the ground. And so you can see this is more leaning than lodging, right. I would say. Um, but we, we do see increase with higher population, but we did not see a correlation between the row width, the row width and the lodging. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know if I right. knew what to expect, but that's what we've kind of seen over the last couple hmm. of years. It's interesting. So more plants per row space may have the same effect if you are seeing that trend line. Possibly. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So again, do the, do the narrower rows make a difference in disease development? We know that a, a lower population can help with disease development. We, we right. saw some data there. But does it make a difference if that's in 20 inch rows or 30 inch rows? And, and we, again, as we go higher in population, we see more disease development, but the 20 inch rows has slightly more disease development than the 30 inch rows. But if we put that on a, on a one to nine scale rather than a one to 2.6, that difference is minimal going to be hard to see. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hmm. And again, it, it all comes back to profitability. So this is a, this is a compilation of three years of data um, across uh, three different locations. Again, that those replications we were talking about. Um, when we look at the, the planning rate, we look at the row width, um, we don't see, we see a higher yield, uh, income potential in the narrower rows, which we, we talked about that mm -hmm. earlier, but we don't really see a correlation between the row width and the population. So it's not like in a in a 20 inch row, 160,000 makes sense, and in a 30 inch row, 120,000 is the best, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, really, you know, if you can get into 20s, you know, it's kind of a separate conversation. What do you think is your best population? What row width do you think is your best? But you don't necessarily have to be concerned about you know, kind of fine tuning it based on right. what system you're going with. The one final thing I want to look at here, Preston, um, is just, you know, these graphs that I've been showing have been at a $12 soybean price for estimate, um, which is higher than a couple last few years prior to this right. year. And so, you know, in those calculations in prior years, we used about an $8, you know, estimate. Yeah. Uh, and what we saw in the $8 estimate was really our, our most profitable planting population is about 120,000. Even though we get higher yield at a higher population, it didn't yep. pay for the additional seed. But if we're talking $12 beans, we see it, you Might know, even at 160,000. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, grower making this decision, I still am pretty comfortable with 140, 130,000. But if a grower is thinking we're going to have high commodity prices, want to push the yield a little bit, I think they might this see is some interesting benefit. Because a lot of, there's a lot of chatter about you know, 60, 80,000 population per acre beans. And this data suggests that that may not be a good idea. You may, get, you may be okay with it, but the risk is probably not worth the potential yeah. reward from a seed 
cost savings perspective. Absolutely, and, and yeah. when we're talking about planting early, which there's a big benefit to planting early, a big potential benefit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't want to go with 80,000 beans where we might end up with 40,000 and get in a replant situation. Cool. If we had 80,000 after emergence, right. no problem. But yeah. planting that, I'd be a little concerned. Huh. So I guess as a final wrap up for the farmers, takeaway, you're okay sticking with 140,000 population, 20s versus 30s, probably not consequential which row spacing you choose uh, and then finally push beans as early in the season planting season as so. possible what about treating those those early planted soybeans anything you do different with those beans versus a bean you plant in may from nothing like a I'd, seed treatment perspective nothing i'd necessarily or? do different because i'd throw the whole load on okay <laughs> whether you're planting in april or may yep, but yep. definitely if you're if you're looking at trying to save some money on seed treatment maybe even go with untreated beans i wouldn't plant those before the beginning of May, probably. Okay. So you're probably going to have to stay off of the early planting bandwagon if you're not willing to put on a treatment. Okay. Right on. So this is a study we intend to continue into the next year, 2022. With more data, we can kind of fine tune some of these recommendations for central Illinois, northern Illinois, some of these Illinois regions. So stay tuned and we'll continue to update this data as it comes out. Yeah.